The Azores, officially the autonomous region of the Azores, is one of the two autonomous regions of Portugal. It is an archipelago composed of nine volcanic islands in the Macaronesia region of the North Atlantic Ocean, about 1,400 km west of Lisbon, about 1,500 km northwest of Morocco, and about 1,930 km southeast of Newfoundland, Canada. Its main industries are agriculture, dairy farming, livestock, fishing, and tourism, which is becoming the major service activity in the region. The government of the Azores employs a large percentage of the population directly or indirectly in the service and tertiary sectors. The largest city of the Azores is Pona Delgada. The culture, dialect, cuisine, and traditions of the Azorean islands vary considerably, because these remote islands were settled sporadically over a span of two centuries. There are nine major Azorean islands and an islet cluster, in three main groups. These are Flores and Corvo, to the west, Graciosa, Tercera, São Jorge, Pico, and Fial in the center, and São Miguel, Santa Maria, and the Formigas Reef to the east. They extend for more than 600 kilometers and lie in a northwest-southeast direction. All of the islands have volcanic origins, although some, such as Santa Maria, have had no recorded activity in the time since the islands were settled several centuries ago. Mount Pico, on the island of Pico, is the highest point in Portugal, at 2,351 meters. If measured from their base at the bottom of the ocean to their peaks, which thrust high above the surface of the Atlantic, the Azores are among the tallest mountains on the planet. The climate of the Azores is very mild for such a northerly location, being influenced by its distance from the continents and by the passing Gulf Stream. Because of the marine influence, temperatures remain mild year-round. Daytime temperatures normally fluctuate between 16 and 25 degrees Celsius depending on season. Temperatures above 30 degrees Celsius or below 3 degrees Celsius are unknown in the major population centers. It is also generally wet and cloudy. A small number of alleged hypogea have been identified on the islands of Corvo, Santa Maria, and Tercera by Portuguese archaeologist Nuno Ribeiro, who speculated that they might date back 2,000 years, implying a human presence on the island before the Portuguese. These kinds of structures have been used in the Azores to store grain. Any suggestions by Ribeiro that they might be burial sites are unconfirmed. Detailed examination and dating to authenticate the validity of these speculations is lacking, thus it is unclear whether these structures are natural or human-made and whether they predate the 15th century Portuguese colonization of the Azores. Under the direction of Prince Henry the Navigator, the Azores were discovered and populated in the early 1400s. The islands were known to Europeans in the 14th century, and parts of them appear in the Catalan Atlas, created in 1375. Half a century later, in 1427, a captain sailing for Prince Henry the Navigator, possibly Gonzalo Velu, may have rediscovered the Azores, but this is not certain. In Thomas Ashe's 1813 work, A History of the Azores, the author identified a Fleming, Joshua van der Berg of Bruges, who made landfall in the archipelago during a storm on his way to Lisbon. He stated that the Portuguese explored the area and claimed it for Portugal. Other stories note the discovery of the first islands by sailors in the service of Henry the Navigator, although there are few documents to support the claims. Although it is commonly said that the archipelago received its name from a soar, a common bird at the time of discovery, it is unlikely that the bird nested or hunted on the islands. There were no large animals on Santa Maria, so after its discovery and before settlement began, sheep were let loose on the island to supply future settlers with food. Settlement did not take place right away, however. Gonzalo Velu Cabral gathered resources and settlers for the next three years and sailed to establish colonies, first on Santa Maria and then on São Miguel. Settlers cleared bush and rocks to plant crops, grain, grapevines, sugarcane, and other plants suitable for local use and of commercial value. They brought domesticated animals, such as chickens, rabbits, cattle, sheep, goats, and pigs, and built houses and established villages. The archipelago was largely settled from mainland Portugal. São Miguel was first settled in 1449, the settlers, mainly from the Estremadura, Alto Alentejo and Algarve areas of mainland Portugal, under the command of Gonçalo Velho Cabral, landed at the site of modern-day Povoçal. Many of the early settlers were Portuguese Sephardi Jews who were banished-slash-exiled there by the Inquisition on mainland Portugal, 
many had well-known Sephardi surnames such as, Pereira, Oliveira, Cardozu, Pimentel, Pinto, Rodriguez, Mendez, or Nunes. 1584 Map of the Azores Islands in 1522, Villafranca do Campo, then the capital of the island, was devastated by an earthquake and landslide that killed about 5,000 people, and the capital was moved to Pona Delgada. The town of Vila Franca do Campo was rebuilt on the original site and today is a thriving fishing and yachting port. Pona Delgada received its city status in 1546. From the first settlement, the pioneers applied themselves to agriculture, and by the 15th century Graciosa exported wheat, barley, wine and brandy. The goods were sent to Tercera largely because of the proximity of the island. Gaspar Fructuoso wrote Saldades de Terra, the first history of the Azores and Macaronesia, in the 1580s. The first reference to the island of São Jorge was made in 1439, but the actual date of discovery is unknown. In 1443, the island was already inhabited, but active settlement only began with the arrival of the noble Flemish native Willem van der Hegen. Arriving at Topo, where he lived and died, he became known as Guillerme de Silvera to the islanders. Joao Vaz Cordereal received the captaincy of the island in 1483. Velas became a town before the end of the 15th century. By 1490, there were 2,000 Flemings living in the islands of Tercera, Pico, Fayal, São Jorge, and Flores. Because there was such a large Flemish settlement, the Azores became known as the Flemish Islands or the Isles of Flanders. Prince Henry the Navigator was responsible for this settlement. His sister, Isabel, was married to Duke Philip of Burgundy, of which Flanders was a part. There was a revolt against Philip's rule, and disease and hunger became rampant. Isabel appealed to Henry to allow some of the unruly Flemings to settle in the Azores. He granted this and supplied them with the necessary transportation and goods. The settlement of the unoccupied islands started in 1439 with people mainly from the continental provinces of Algarve and Alentejo. In 1583, Philip II of Spain, as King of Portugal, sent his fleet to clear the Azores of a combined multinational force of adventurers, mercenaries, volunteers and soldiers who were attempting to establish the Azores as a staging post for a rival pretender to the Portuguese throne. Following the success of his fleet at the Battle of Pona del Gata captured enemies were hanged from yardarms, as they were considered pirates by Philip II. Opponents receiving the news variously portrayed Philip II as a despot or black legend, the sort of insult widely made against contemporary monarchs engaged in aggressive empire building in the European wars of religion. An English raid of the Azores in 1589 successfully plundered some harboring ships and islands, a repeat eight years later, the island's voyage, failed. Spain held the Azores under the Babylonian captivity of 1580-1642. In the late 16th century, the Azores and Madeira began to face problems of overpopulation. Spawning from that particular economic problem, some of the people began to emigrate to Brazil. The Battle of Tercera, part of the War of the Portuguese Succession following the death of Henry, the Cardinal King of Portugal in 1580, the nation fell into a dynastic crisis with various pretenders to the crown of Portugal. The most powerful of which was King Philip II of Spain, who justified his rights to the Portuguese throne by the fact that his mother was a Portuguese royal princess, his maternal grandfather being King Manuel I of Portugal. Following his proclamation in Santarim, Antonio Prior of Cratu was acclaimed in the Azores in 1580 but was expelled from the continent by the Spaniards following the Battle of Alcantara. Yet, through the administration of Cipriano de Figueredo, governor of Tercera, the Azorians resisted Spanish attempts to conquer the islands. It was Figueredo and Violante do Canto who helped organize a resistance on Tercera that influenced some of the response of the other islands, even as internal politics and support for Philip's faction increased on the other islands. The Azores were the last part of the Portuguese Empire to resist Philip's reign over Portugal, until the defeat of forces loyal to the prior of Crata with the conquest of the Azores in 1583. Portuguese control resumed with the end of the Iberian Union in 1640, and the beginning of the Portuguese Restoration War, not by the professional military, who were occupied with warfare on the Portuguese mainland, but by local people attacking a fortified Castilian garrison. King Emperor Pedro IV and I planned and launched his campaign in the Liberal Wars from the Azores in name of his daughter Queen Maria II. The Portuguese Civil War had strong repercussions in the Azores. 
In 1829, in Pride de Vitoria, the liberals won over the absolutists, making Tercera Island the main headquarters of the new Portuguese regime and also where the Council of Regency of Maria II of Portugal was established. Beginning in 1868, Portugal issued its stamps overprinted with a Suresh for use in the islands. Between 1892 and 1906, it also issued separate stamps for the three administrative districts of the time. During the 18th and 19th centuries, Graciosa was host to many prominent figures, including Chateaubriand, the French writer who passed through upon his escape to America during the French Revolution, Almeida Garrett. The Portuguese poet who visited an uncle and wrote some poetry while there, and Prince Albert of Monaco, the 19th century oceanographer who led several expeditions in the waters of the Azores. He arrived on his yacht Irondel and visited the Ferna de Caldera, the noted hot springs grotto. In 1869, the author Mark Twain published The Innocents Abroad, a travel book, where he described his time in the Azores. From 1836 to 1976, the archipelago was divided into three districts, equivalent to those in the Portuguese mainland. The division was arbitrary and did not follow the natural island groups, rather reflecting the location of each district capital on the three main cities. Symbol of the Azorean autonomist movement in the 19th century and 1931, the Azores revolted against the Gitadura Nacional and were held briefly by military rebels. In 1943, during World War II, the Portuguese ruler Antonio de Oliveira Salazar leased air and naval bases in the Azores to Great Britain. The occupation of these facilities in October 1943 was codenamed Operation Alacrity by the British. This was a key turning point in the Battle of the Atlantic, enabling the Royal Air Force, the U.S. Army Air Forces, and the U.S. Navy to provide aerial coverage in the Mid-Atlantic Gap. This helped them to protect convoys and to hunt hostile German U-boats. In 1944, the U.S. constructed a small and short-lived air base on the island of Santa Maria. In 1945, a new base was constructed on the island of Tercera, named Lajes Field. This air base is in an area called Lajes, a broad, flat sea terrace that had been a large farm. Lajes Field is a plateau rising out of the sea on the northeast corner of the island. This air base is a joint American and Portuguese venture. Lajes Field continues to support the American and Portuguese armed forces. The Azores Liberation Front's flag preceded the modern Azorean flag. During the Cold War, U.S. Navy P-3 Orion anti-submarine warfare squadrons patrolled the North Atlantic Ocean for Soviet Navy submarines and surface warships. Since its opening, Lajes Field has been used for refueling American cargo planes bound for Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. The U.S. Navy keeps a small squadron of its ships at the harbor of Praia de Vitoria, three kilometers southeast of Lajes Field. The airfield also has a small commercial terminal handling scheduled and chartered passenger flights from the other islands in the Azores, Europe, Africa, and North America. Following the Carnation Revolution of 1974, which deposed the Estado Novo dictatorship in Lisbon, Portugal and its territories across the world entered into a period of great political uncertainty. The Azorean Liberation Front attempted to take advantage of this instability immediately after the revolution, hoping to establish an independent Azores, until operations ceased in 1975. In 1976, the Azores became the autonomous region of the Azores, one of the autonomous regions of Portugal, and the subdistricts of the Azores were eliminated. In 2003, the Azores saw international attention when United States President George W. Bush, British Prime Minister Tony Blair, Spanish Prime Minister José María Asnar and Portuguese Prime Minister José Manuel Dura Barroso held a summit their days before the commencement of the Iraq War. Map of the Azores The archipelago of the Azores is located in the middle of the northern hemisphere of the Atlantic Ocean and extends along a west-northwest to east-southeast orientation in an area of approximately 600 kilometers wide. The islands of the Azores emerged from what is called the Azores Plateau, a 5. 8 million square kilometer region that is morphologically accented by a depth of 2,000 meters. The nine islands that compose the archipelago occupy a surface area of 2,346 square kilometers, that includes both the main islands and many islets located in their vicinities. They range in surface area from the largest, São Miguel, at 759 square kilometers to the smallest, Corvo, at approximately 17 square kilometers. Each of the islands has its own distinct geomorphological characteristics that make them unique. Corvo is a crater of a major Plinian eruption, 
Flores is a rugged island carved by many valleys and escarpments. Fayal is characterized. For its shield volcano and caldera, Pico is the highest point, at 2,351 meters, in the Azores and continental Portugal. Graciosa is known for its active furnace doing so for a mixture of volcanic cones and plains. São Jorge is a long slender island. Formed from fissural eruptions over thousands of years, Tercera, almost circular, is the location of one of the largest craters in the region. São Miguel is the largest island and is pitted. With many large craters and fields of spatter cones, and Santa Maria, the oldest island, is heavily eroded, being one of the few places to encounter brown sandy beaches in the archipelago. The Lago Adas Set Sedagis, located within the Set Sedagis Massif, in Set Sedagis, São Miguel Island. These islands can be divided into three recognizable groups located on the Azores Plateau, São Jorge, Pico and Fayal are also known collectively as Islands of the Triangle. Several subsurface reefs, banks, as well as many hydrothermal vents and seamounts are monitored by the regional authorities. Owing to the complex geotectonic and socioeconomic significance within the economic exclusion zone of the archipelago. From a geostructural perspective, the Azores is located above an active triple junction between three of the world's major tectonic plates, the North American Plate, the Eurasian Plate and the African Plate, a condition that has translated into the existence of many faults and fractures in this region of the Atlantic. The westernmost islands of the archipelago are located on the North American plate, while the remaining islands are located within the boundary that divides the Eurasian and African plates. The principal tectonic structures that exist in the region of the Azores are the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, the Tercera Rift, the Azores Fracture Zone and the Gloria Fault. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is the main frontier between the North American plate and the African-Eurasian plates that crosses the Azores Plateau between the islands of Flores and Fial from north to south and to the southwest, it is an extensive form crossed by many transformed faults running perpendicular to its north-south orientation. That is seismically active and susceptible to volcanism. The Tercera Rift is a system of fractures that extends from the Mid-Atlantic Ridge to the Gloria Fault that represents the main frontier between the Eurasian and African plates. It is defined by a line of submarine volcanoes and island mounts that extend northwest to southeast for about 550 kilometers. From the area west of Graciosa until the islets of the Formigas, that includes the islands of Graciosa, Tercera, and São Miguel. Its northwest limit connects to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, while the southeast section intersects the Gloria Fault southeast of the island of Santa Maria. The Azores Fracture Zone extends from the Gloria Fault and encompasses a relatively inactive area to the south of the islands of the central and eastern groups north to the Tercera Rift, along a 45 degrees angle. The Gloria Fault for its part, extends 800 kilometers along a linear line from the Azores to the Azores-Gibraltar Transform Fault. Usual biome of the islands. A mix of Laura Silva, introduced cryptomeria forests and agricultural fields, with usually small populated centers in between. Photo from Furnace, São Miguel Island The island's volcanism is associated with the rifting along the Azores Triple Junction. The spread of the crust along the existing faults and fractures has produced many of the active volcanic and seismic events. While supported by buoy and upwelling in the deeper mantle, some associate with an Azores hotspot. Most of the volcanic activity has centered, primarily, along the Tercera Rift. From the beginning of the island's settlement, around the 15th century, there have been 28 registered volcanic eruptions. The last significant volcanic eruption, the Kapilinhos Volcano, occurred off the coast of the island of Fayal in 1957. The most recent volcanic activity occurred in the seamounts and submarine volcanoes off the coast of Cerda and in the Pico São Jorge Channel. Alger do Curvao Volcanic Cave on Tercera Island The islands have many examples of volcano-built geomorphology including caves and lava tubes. The coastal lava fields, like the coast of Feitiras. Fayal, the Misterio of Prena or São João on Pico Island. In addition to the inactive cones in central São Miguel Island, the aforementioned Capilinhos on Fayal, the volcanic complexes of Tercero, or Pliny and Caldera of Corvo Island. The islands of the archipelago were formed through volcanic and seismic activity during the Neogene period. The first embryonic surfaces started to appear in the waters of Santa Maria during the Miocene epoch. Mount Pico, the highest mountain in Portugal, displays the remnants of its last major eruption on its northern flank the sequence of the island formation has been generally characterized as Santa Maria São Miguel Tercera Graciosa Flores 
Fuyal, São Jorge, Corvo and the youngest, Pico. Although all islands have experienced volcanism during their geological history, within recorded human settlement history the islands of Santa Maria, Graciosa, Flores, and Corvo have not experienced any volcanic eruptions, in addition to active fumaroles and hot springs. The remaining islands have had sporadic eruptions since the 14th century. Apart from the Capilinjo's volcano in 1957-58, the last recorded instance of island formation occurred off the coast of São Miguel, when the island of Sabrina was briefly formed. Owing to its geodynamic environment, the region has been a center of intense seismic activity, particularly along its tectonic boundaries on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and Tercera Rift. Seismic events although frequent, are usually tectonic or vulco-tectonic in nature, but in general are of low to medium intensities, occasionally punctuated by events of level 5 or greater on the Richter magnitude scale. The most severe earthquake was registered in 1757, near Cayeta on the island of São Jorge, which exceeded 7 on the Richter magnitude scale. In comparison, the 1522 earthquake that was mentioned by historian Gaspar Frutuoso measured 6. 8, but its effects were judged to be X on the Merkley intensity scale, and was responsible for the destruction of Vila Franca do Campo and landslides that may have killed more than 5,000 of the inhabitants. Fogu Lake on São Miguel Island The archipelago lies in the Palearctic realm and has a unique biotic community that includes the Macaronesian subtropical Laura Silva, with many endemic species of plants and animals. There are at least 6,112 terrestrial species, of which about 411 are endemic. The majority of these endemics are animals, mostly arthropods and mollusks. New species are found regularly in the Azores. Human impact on the native flora of São Jorge can be seen by the hydrangeas and pittosporum undulatum even though the Azores look very green and sometimes wild, the vegetation has been extremely altered. A great part of it has been wiped out in the past 600 years for its valuable wood and to clear land for agriculture. As a result, it is estimated that more than half of insects on the Graciosa Island have disappeared or will become extinct. Many cultivated places have now been abandoned, especially as a result of emigration. Consequently, some invasive plants have filled these deserted and disturbed lands. Hydrangeas are another potential pest, but their threat is less serious. Notwithstanding the fact that hydrangeas were introduced from America or Asia, some locals consider them a symbol of the archipelago and propagate them along roadsides. Cryptomeria, the Japanese cedar, is a conifer extensively grown for its timber. The two most common of these alien species are Pittosporum undulatum and Hedicium gardnerianum. Reforestation efforts with native Laura Silva vegetation have been accomplished successfully in many parts of the Azores. The Azores has at least two endemic living bird species. The Azores bullfinch, or priolo, is restricted to remnant Laura Silva forest in the mountains at the eastern end of São Miguel and is classified by BirdLife International as endangered. Montero storm petrel, described as science as recently as 2008, is known to breed in just two locations in the islands but may occur more widely. An extinct species of owl, the São Miguel scops owl, has recently been described, which probably became extinct after human settlement because of habitat destruction and the introduction of alien species. Five species of flightless rail once existed on the islands, as did a flightless quail and another species of bullfinch, the greater Azores bullfinch, but these also went extinct after human colonization. Eleven subspecies of bird are endemic to the islands. The Azores has an endemic bat, the Azores noctual, which has an unusually high frequency of diurnal flight. The islets of the Formigas, including the area known as the Dalabarat Reef, have a rich environment of maritime species, such as black coral and manta rays, different species of sharks, whales, and sea turtles. Seventeen new marine reserves were added to the Azorean Marine Park. On São Miguel there are notable microhabitats formed by hot springs that host extremophile microorganisms. Mount Pico covered with snow. The archipelago is spread out at roughly the same latitude as the southern half of mainland Portugal, but its location in the mid-Atlantic Ocean gives it a generally tepid, oceanic, mild to warm subtropical climate, with mild annual oscillations. The Azores archipelago is located in a transition and confrontation zone between air masses of tropical origin and masses of cooler air of polar origin. The climate of the archipelago is largely determined by variations in the atmospheric pressure field over the North Atlantic. 
These variations conditioned by the mass of the American continent and the Atlantic water mass are overlapped by a semi-permanent subtropical Atlantic anticyclone, commonly known as the Azores High. This anticyclone experiences seasonal variations which can affect the archipelago in many ways. In winter, the Azores anticyclone is positioned further south, and allows for a descent of the polar front, approaching it to the archipelago. In summer, on the other hand, the anticyclone's movement further north, leads to the departure of the polar front and its associated disturbances towards higher latitudes. Far enough away from the mainland coasts, the continental air masses that reach the archipelago are weakened by the maritime influence. The same cannot be said for the higher altitudes, where upper air masses of a continental origin and with a more direct pathway can reach the surface and present those areas with drier air and more extreme temperatures. At the same time, this free atmosphere circulating air transports aerosols to the archipelago, namely volcanic ash or fine sands from the Sahara Desert, which sporadically affect the radiation and air quality. Waterfalls on the highly precipitous island of Flores' daily maximum temperatures at low altitudes usually range between 16 and 25 degrees Celsius. The average annual rainfall generally increases from east to west, ranging from 700 mm in Santa Maria to 1,600 mm in Flores and reaching values above 5,000 mm on the highlands of Pico. Under the Köppen climate classification, the eastern group is usually classified as Mediterranean while the central and western group is increasingly more humid subtropical and overall rainier because of the effects of the Gulf Stream. This stream has a large effect over the sea temperature which varies between 15 degrees Celsius in February and March, and 23 degrees Celsius in August and September, and increases earlier in the Western Group. Salvador Rivas Martinez data presents several different bioclimatic zones for the Azores. Seasonal lag is extreme in the low sun half of the year, with December being milder than April in terms of mean temperatures. During summer the lag is somewhat lower, with August being the warmest month, though September is usually as warm or warmer than July. Although temperatures as warm as 32. 1 degree Celsius have been recorded on Pico, neither Pona Delgada nor Angra do Aeroismo, the two largest cities, have ever gone above 30 degrees Celsius. There has never been a frost, snowfall, freeze or even temperatures below 5 degrees Celsius recorded at sea level on any of the islands. The coldest weather in winter usually comes from northwesterly air masses originating from Labrador and Canada. However, since those air masses are warmed up as they pass across the warmer Atlantic Ocean, temperatures by day even then exceed 10 degrees Celsius. The average relative humidity can range from 80% at the coast to over 90% above 400 meters. However, higher elevations above the planetary boundary layer can experience extremely low values close to 10%. Summers are especially humid in August and may increase the perceived temperature by a few degrees. Winters are not only very mild but also very humid and contribute substantially to the annual precipitation. Insulation is relatively low, with 35-40% to of the total possible value for sunshine, and higher in topographically lower islands such as Graciosa or Santa Maria, inversely proportional to precipitation. This is directly caused by the orographic lift of humid, air masses and is especially pronounced in islands marked by high orography. Hurricanes with a greater rarity especially in late summer and autumn, despite the northern position that the archipelago occupies, the Azores can be affected by the passage of tropical cyclones, or tropical storms derived from them. Some can result from anomalies of low-latitude systems while others result from the return, back to the Atlantic, after a route close to or even over the American continent. Though often small and in the process of dissipation, these cyclones result in many of the worst storms the archipelago is subject to. A total of 14 tropical or subtropical cyclones have affected the region in history. Most of them were either extratropical or tropical storms when they affected the region, although several Category 1 hurricanes have reached the Azores. Two major hurricanes have impacted the islands, Hurricane Ophelia in 2017 and Hurricane Lorenzo in 2019. The following storms have impacted the region while at Category 1 strength, Hurricane Fran in 1973, Hurricane Emmy in 1976, Hurricane Gordon in 2006, Hurricane Gordon in 2012 and Hurricane Alex in 2016. Several tropical storms have hit the region, including Tropical Storm Irma in 1978, Hurricane Bonnie in 1992, Hurricane Charlie in 1992, Hurricane Erica in 1997, and Hurricane Gaston in 2016. 
Storms that were extratropical when they impacted the region include Hurricane Tanya in 1995, Tropical Storm Anna in 2003 and Tropical Storm Grace in 2009. In addition, the 2005 Azores subtropical storm affected the region in October 2005. In order of importance, the main sectors of employment of the Azores are services, agriculture, fishery, industry and tourism. The Azores are divided into 19 municipalities. Each municipality is further divided into freguesias, of which there is a total of 156 in all of the Azores. There are six cities in the Azores, Ponta Delgada, Lagoa and Ribera Grande on the island of São Miguel, Angra do Aroismo and Praia de Vitoria on the island of Tercera, and Orta on Fayal. Three of these, Pona Delgada, Angra and Orta are considered capital-slash-administrative cities to the regional government, homes to the president, the judiciary and the regional assembly. Angra also serves as the ecclesiastical center of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Angra, the Episcopal See of the Azores. Pona Delgada, on São Miguel Island, is the largest city in the Azores and the executive capital of the Azores. Angra do Aroismo, on Tercera Island, is UNESCO World Heritage and the judicial capital of the Azores. According to the 2019 census, population in the Azores was 242,796. The Azores were uninhabited when Portuguese navigators arrived in the early 15th century. Settlement began in 1439 with migrants from several regions of mainland Portugal and from Madeira. Many Portuguese Sephardic Jews settled on the islands in large numbers. Moorish prisoners and African slaves from Guinea Cape Verde, and Sao Tomé contributed to the population as well. Thus the Azorean population received a significant contribution from people with geographic backgrounds other than Portuguese. The island sometimes served as a waypoint for ships carrying African slaves. Moorish and African genetic heritage, likely facilitated by the African slavery, and supported by historical reports, is supported by the genetic data. Contributions from Sephardic Jews and Northern Europe also are supported by the analysis of genetic data. In addition to Portuguese and Africans, Moors, Sephardic Jews, Madeirans, as well as Flemish, French, and Spanish settlers migrated to the Azores. Orta, on Fial Island, is the legislative capital of the Azores. Genetic analysis suggests that the archipelago was populated mainly from Portugal, however, contributions from other lineages are significant. Since the 17th century, many Azorians have emigrated, mainly to Brazil, Uruguay, the United States and Canada. Rhode Island and southeastern Massachusetts are the primary destination for Azorian emigrants. From 1921 to 1977, about 250,000 Azorians immigrated to Rhode Island and Massachusetts. Northern California was the final destination for many of the Massachusetts immigrants who then moved on to the San Joaquin Valley, especially the city of Turlock. In the late 19th century many Azorians immigrated to the Hawaiian Islands. The tuna fishing industry drew a significant number of Azorians to the Point Loma neighborhood of San Diego. During the Great Recession of the early 21st century, Portugal was in a recession from 2011 until 2013 which resulted in high levels of unemployment across the mainland as well as the Azores. The Great Recession led to an increase of emigration from the Azores. Florianópolis and Porto Alegre in the southern region of Brazil were founded by Azorians, who accounted for over half of Rio Grande do Sul and Santa Catarina's populations in the late 18th century. As late as 1960, mass immigration currents were registered to Brazil, and many were from the Azores. Santana Palace is the seat of the President of the Azores. Palace of the Capitais Generais is a residence of the Azorean President. Since 1976, the Azores has been an autonomous region integrated within the framework of the Portuguese Republic. It has its own government and autonomous legislature within its own political administrative statute and organic law. Its governmental organs include, the Legislative Assembly, a unicameral parliament composed of 52 elected deputies, elected by universal suffrage for a four-year term, the regional government and presidency. With parliamentary legitimacy, composed of a president, a vice president and seven regional secretaries responsible for day-to-day -day operations. It is represented in the Council of Ministers by a representative appointed by the President of the Republic, which was created during the revision of the Constitution of 2004, which, among other things, Remove the older Portuguese representative that was appointed by the President of the Republic, beholden to the Council of State and coincident with the President. 
Since becoming a Portuguese autonomous region, the executive branch of the regional authority has been located in Pona Delgada, the legislative branch in Orta, and the judicial branch in Angra do Aroisma. Madre de Deus Manor is the seat of the representative of the Republic. Conceição Palace is the headquarters of the Azorian cabinet. The islands of the archipelago do not have independent status in law, except in electoral law and are governed by 19 municipalities that subdivide the islands. In addition, until the administrative reform of the 19th century, the following civil parishes had municipal standing, Topo, Praia, today integrated into municipality of Santa Cruz de Graciosa, São Sebastião, Capelish, and Agua de Pau. These civil parishes still retain their titles of vila in name only, the populations of Capelish and neighboring parish still protest the change and promote the restoration of their status. The municipalities are further subdivided into several civil parishes, with the exception of Corvo. Azorian politics is dominated by the two largest Portuguese political parties, the Socialist Party and Social Democratic Party, the former holding a majority in the Legislative Assembly. The Democratic and Social Center, People's Party, the Left Bloc, the Unitary Democratic Coalition and the People's Monarchist Party are also represented. As of the 2020 regional election, the president of the Azores is Social Democratic Party leader José Manuel Boliero. Although the Socialist Party dominates the regional politics, the Social Democratic Party is traditionally popular in city and town council elections. As part of Portugal, the Azores are in the European Union and Schengen area. They are also in the European Union Customs Union and VAT area but levy a lower rate of VAT than applies on the mainland. The Azores, like Madeira and the Canary Islands, are among member state territories with special status, as one of the designated outermost regions. Country Road on Flores Island Lajas Air Base, on Tercera Island, is a joint Portuguese Air Force and U.S. Air Force military base. Each of the nine islands has an airport, although the majority are airfields rather than airports. The commercial terminals in Pona Delgada, Orta, Vila do Porto and Santa Cruz das Flores are operated by ANA, Aeroportos de Portugal, a public entity that oversees the operations of airports across Portugal. The remaining, except for Lajas Field, are operated by the regional government. Lajas is a military airbase, as well as a commercial airport, and is operated by the Portuguese Armed Forces in conjunction with the United States. The airports are Marina of Angra do Aeroismo The Azores has had a long history of marine transport to overcome distances and establish inter-community contacts and trade. Consequently, the shipbuilding industry developed in many islands, from small fishing boats to whaling sloops and larger passenger services. Passenger traffic to the main islands began in the 17th century, and between the 18th and 19th century, the Pico yacht controlled the lucrative summer traffic season. After 1871, the Insulana Shipping Company was the only entity responsible for regular traffic between the islands, Madeira and the United States. Finally, cargo and passenger transportation ceased in the 1970s, and the ships were sold or converted into tuna fishing boats. For the next 20 years, commercial maritime service between the islands ceased. The Port of Orta is famed worldwide as a transatlantic stop for yachts and sailors. Transmasser was founded in 1987. The shipping company operates four to six daily connections between Orta and Madalena throughout the year, using its small fleet of ships, in addition to inter island connections between Fial, Pico, Sao Jorge, and Tercera during the summer months. New initiatives began in the late 1990s. The Catamaran Yapitus began services, followed by Lady of Man and Golf in Hoasul. Steve Jobs' yacht Venus at Orta Marina in 2005, Atlantic Island was established, providing transport services. In 2009, Atlantic Island was involved in a controversial rejection of a 750-passenger, 150-vehicle ship ordered from the Esteliros de Viana do Castelo. The Outlandi da, a 50 million euro cruiser was rejected in 2009 by Atlantic Island for the underperformance of the power plant. Although it would only result in a five-minute delay between islands, the public company rejected the ship, and the contract was broken over the builder's inability to deliver the required ship on time. While the ship was being shopped to other interested parties, no interested buyers appeared. And ENVC decided to cede the Atlantida to Atlantic Island as part of the latter's open international competition to charter two ships in 2012. In June 2011, the regional government announced that it would purchase 60% of Transmasser, equivalent to 500,000 euro of the company's capital. 
With this transaction the autonomous government of the Azores ceded control, of which it once had 88% of the capital. The signed Memorandum of Understanding concluded negotiations between the various parties involved, under which the liability of Transmasser was divided equally between the government and businessman José E. Almeida, who is now the holder of a majority stake in the company. Similarly, the regional government approved the consolidation of the three individual port authorities, Administração dos Portos do Triângulo e Grupo Ocidental, Administração dos Portos de Tercera e Graciosa and the Administração dos Portos das Ilhas de São Miguel e Santa Maria, and regional Portos das Açores into one entity that resulted in a 2. 2 million euro cost savings, in addition to a reduction from 11 to 3 administrators. The architecture of the Azores is characterized by the contrast between black volcanic stone and white stucco. Religious festivals, patron saints and traditional holidays mark the Azorean calendar. The most important religious events are tied with the festivals associated with the cult of the Holy Spirit, commonly referred to as the festivals of the Holy Spirit. Rooted in millenarian dogma and held on all islands from May to September. These festivals are very important to the Azorean people, who are primarily Roman Catholic, and combine religious rituals with processions celebrating the benevolence and egalitarianism of neighbors. These events are centered around tritros or imperios, small buildings that host the meals, adoration and charity of the participants, and used to store the artifacts associated with the events. On Tercera, for example, these imperios have grown into ornate buildings painted and cared for by the local brotherhoods in their respective parishes. The events focus on the members of local parishes, not tourists, but all are welcome, as sharing is one of the main principles of the festivals. Some limited events focus on tourists, including a public event that the city government of Ponta Delgada on the island of São Miguel holds, which attracts visitors and locals. Imperios of the Cult of the Holy Spirit are found throughout the Azores. Procession of the Cult of the Holy Lord Christ of the Miracles The Festival of the Lord Holy Christ of the Miracles, Senor Santo. Cristo dos Milagres, in Ponta Delgada is the largest individual religious event in the Azores and takes place on Rogation Sunday. Pilgrims from within the Portuguese diaspora normally travel to Pona Delgada to participate in an afternoon procession behind the image of Christ along the flower-decorated streets of the city. Although the solemn procession is only held on one day, the events of the festival of Senhor Santo Cristo occur over a period of a week and involve a ritual of moving the image between the main church and convent nightly. Ultimately culminating in the procession, which is televised within the Azores and to the Portuguese diaspora. The Sanyo Nina's festivities in Angra do Aroismo on Tercera are held in June honoring St. Anthony, St. Peter and St. John the Baptist, in a large religious celebration. The Festival of Our Lady of Lourdes, patron saint of Whalers, begins in Lajas on Pico Island on the last Sunday of August and runs through the week, Whalers Week. It is marked by social and cultural events connected to the tradition of whale hunting. The Wine Harvest Festival takes place during the first week of September and is a century-old custom of the people of Pico. On Corvo, the people celebrate their patron Saint Nasa Senora dos Milagres on 15th of August every year in addition to the festivals of the Divine Holy Spirit. The Festival de Mare de Agosto, takes place every year beginning on 15th of August in Praia Formosa on Santa Maria. Also, the Semana do Mar, dedicated almost exclusively to water sports, takes place in August in the city of Orta, on Fial. Carnival is celebrated in the Azores. Parades and pageants are the heart of the carnival festivities. There is lively music, colorful costumes, handmade masks, and floats. The traditional bullfights and the bullring are ongoing as is the running of bulls in the streets. Thanks for watching.